Welcome to Family Matters. I'm Dr. Barry Hopkins, and we have two of the most special, let me say that again, special guesses, <laughs> guesses <laughs> uh, tonight because they are dramatic and they are artistic and they are creative. They're from Luna Stage in West Orange. I have, let me get their names right, I have Sadrine, who's sitting over there, and I have Lucy sitting here. And we'll give the last names if you work out okay. If you don't work out okay, <laughs> okay wow. you'll just be... <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having us. us. Now, there's some people out there who are saying, what is Luna? What is Luna? You want to answer this? Or? <laughs> I'll, I'll get it. Uh, Luna is a professional theater located in West Orange. Um, it's a dynamic theater. It's cutting edge. Mm -hmm. There's a diversity of... Uh, now, wait a minute. What does dynamic mean? That, uh, dynamic, lively. Lively. Um, you know, it, it's cutting edge. It, it deals with controversial issues. Mm -hmm. um, it's not afraid to challenge its audience. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it deals with the number of different facets of the human story. Um, women, men, children, you know, black, white, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, race, gender. I've been there many times, and you go in, and there are only about a hundred seats. Yeah, it's yes, a, it's a small theater. It's a small yeah. theater. Small, cozy, intimate, cozy, intimate, very intimate. theater. Uh -huh. um, there are talkbacks, and we get to engage with the audience, the playwrights, the directors. There's monthly readings. Mm -hmm. uh, there are classes for adults and small children and teenagers. There's about something for every everyone at well, Luna. Well, how did you get connected to Luna? Um, I, last year, uh, saw Lines in the Dust, a play by Nicole Salter. Mm -hmm. As a former teacher, it was a riveting play that discussed issues, particularly germane to New Jersey, about sort of what education looks like, um, in, particularly in this state. Mm -hmm. and some of the issues that are pervasive in the educational system uh, oh, today. Good. You said former teacher. Former teacher. Now, what That's does right. that mean? I mean, with all the need for intelligent, bright, attractive, <laughs> creative, uh, whatever teachers, mm -hmm. you stepped away? I did. Dun, dun, dun. I <laughs> did. Um, and only for a moment, I, I think it's, I'm always a teacher at heart and I'm just changing the venue. So I'm going along the lines of a teacher artist rather than a, a formal classroom teacher, mm -hmm. just because my dramaticness and creativity is just yeah, well, can't that, be, you know, constrained. And that's all legal. I mean, that, that's great <laughs> to hear you're kind of stepping a little bit outside the box. Yeah, yeah, I'm taking good. a risk. Talking about stepping out of the box, Lucy. <laughs> is here and she's at home. This is Columbia High School yeah. <laughs> where we're taping and she's a star. Yes. Well, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> How did you get into appearing as, what's, what's the character's name? Puppy. Puppy. Puppy and Divot. Is there a kitten there at all? all <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. No, um, I got involved at the Luna uh, stage when uh, I took a drama literature class last year, and my teacher got an email from Cheryl Katz, who's the artistic director, saying uh, that they were looking for teenage girls to be in this show about 1930s basketball. And she asked the class, she goes, you guys don't have to do this, but there is an audition for you guys out there. And I came up to her, I'm like, I'm really interested in this. Like, I want something to do. I love theater. I want to try giving the professional world a shot. And she's like, all right, here, here it is. Here's the information. And it was about a week before the audition, so that's what it sort of... So when you arrived for the audition, were you nervous? I was incredibly nervous. Um, I was surrounded by uh, girls who were a lot older than me, who were a lot taller than me, <laughs> which is kind of needed in the show. Um, 
and I, because I only had a week to prepare, I was very, I was so nervous, I still had like a monologue in my hands, and girls were leaving the room without pieces of paper, they all had everything memorized, and I'm just mm. sitting there, like, mm -hmm. my headshot was taken by my cousin, I learned this a week ago, <laughs> like, I don't know how about this, <laughs> and luckily it ended out uh, fine, so, like, but... Yeah, you're hired, right? Yeah, I'm hired. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that, that must be interesting when you go to audition with people who you feel are more experienced and had, mm -hmm. had opportunities that you have not yet had. Yeah. Um, now, did you start out when you were four or five years old dressing up and... I mean, I've always sort of done... I've always been the kid who would act out whatever they saw on the screen. Like, when I was younger, I used to sit around memorizing parts of movies, and I would do a lot of intimidation. My mom just thought I had a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So I tried, I think, about every sport under the sun. And eventually, when I got to fifth or sixth grade, my, mo my mom and my dad just said, listen, you spend too much time watching movies. Just try an acting class. <laughs> just get out of the house. I'm like, all right. And uh, now, here I am. Like, was it six years later? Nice. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have just come through the Emmys and and I'm sure most of you, both of you, uh, saw a little bit of it. Hey, indeed I did. You did? I well, did. What, what, what impressed you about <laughs> uh, the Emmys and some of the winners? What impressed me um, was the, the conversations that will be coming from the Emmys. Um, I think we're stepping into an age where um, diversity is no longer just an issue that gets swept mm -hmm. under a rug, but something that's uh, pertinent and that affects many people. And a lot of young black girls got to see someone that looked just like them winning an award and might have inspired and encouraged them uh, to continue their work. And it's also galvanizing, I think, a conversation around writers as well, who's behind the scenes mm -hmm. creating the characters. Um, and that sort of thing, and that's a positive. Yeah. And you have the same kind of passion for acting as uh, as uh, Lucy <laughs> has just mentioned. I um, have dabbled. I'm I'm <laughs> very shy, <clears throat> as you can tell. Uh, both of us, huh? Yeah, and uh, but no, my my venue is playwriting, and uh, that's what I enjoy doing most, but. If called to task, I will put on my actor's hat and, mm -hmm. you know, act. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A few minutes later, we'll just give you the hat. Uh, of course. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here for everything. What's the difference <laughs> between playwriting and writing a book? Uh, the difference in my own mind is uh, the open-endedness. Uh, playwriting is more like a conversation, almost literally people having conversations and mm -hmm. the liveliness of it, um, the emotional response that you get, the immediate emotional response. A novel is, I feel, uh, can I say this? It's a little... It's, yeah, when you disagree with her, just write her and I'll <laughs> give you her address. <laughs> it feels, it seems a little safer uh -huh. to me. Um, Playwriting seems safer. Novel writing. Novel writing. You get, okay. you know, oh, it's you're kind of one step removed. One step removed. People mm -hmm. read the book. They might not ever see your face. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it might be the same with playwright. But I think um, when you see a play, because there's so much emotion and it could be either really good or really bad or somewhere in between, people immediately say, "Who who wrote that? Where, <laughs> where are they? Are they in the audience? Who wrote that? <laughs> who wrote that? <laughs> right. I don't even know now." Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you seen some recent plays? Yeah, that's tell 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 me about one or two. Uh, I just saw a play in New York, um, Couriers and Contraband. Uh, excellent play, uh, a new uh, spy thriller mm. that's set in during the Civil War. Excellent. Um, of course, I've snuck into some rehearsals of <laughs> the Tall Girls. Mm -hmm. That should be swell. <laughs> um, part of my job as an artistic associate at Luna is to read every single play and we have a great season coming up uh, we have a, a play about murder 
a musical. <laughs> uh, relationships can be murder is the mm -hmm. tagline. Wow. Uh, Thrill me, the Leopold oh, yeah. and Loeb story. I'm excited for that one. Uh, there's um, the Brother Size that's coming in February uh, by one of the most celebrated playwrights this century um, by Terrell Alvin McCraney. Mm -hmm. And then we have a premiere, world premiere, of Old Love, New Love uh, by Laura Brienza that I may be able to be on the the table with the, the script. So we're still sort of developing the mm. script. So behind the scenes, I get to uh, involve myself in the direction of ve a very small part, I should say, in, mm -hmm. in helping. But yeah. I get to be there, so well, that's you'll, exciting. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be the star. Um, I didn't see that. <laughs> uh, I'll be the tiny, you know, associate in the side, you know, <laughs> trying to give my suggestions and help out. Okay. You know. Okay, Lucy. Yeah. Uh, what's Tall Girls about? Tall Girls is I about. I know it's about a little town. I yeah. know it's in the 30s. Yeah. I know there's a man who comes to town, and I know, but I don't <laughs> know much about it. Well, uh, it's about really like the passion of basketball and how it's sort of um, is, I don't know, like an escape from the lives of five different girls and. The play starts off with the arrival of the main character, Jean, and uh, Haunt Johnny, and um, I don't know how to describe this, and it starts off that it's discovered very easily that uh, that Haunt Johnny is somehow involved in basketball and he finds that Jean should play. And we don't know much about him, and Jean is picked up by her cousin, Almeida, who has a crazy passion for basketball, and later on you meet the characters like Puppy, Lurleen. And I know. Puppy is you. Puppy is me. Tell, tell us a little bit about Puppy. Puppy is the. <laughs> yeah. Puppy is the oldest of the girls, but um, unfortunately that doesn't come into play a lot because Puppy, it's exactly what it sounds like. She's treated like a puppy. She is the point guard, and throughout the entirety of the play, she's constantly on the fence between uh, what her mother wants her to do and what her friends want her to do. She has this very controlling mother who's part of. Uh, She's the representative, of the, they're in a town called Port Prairie, and she's the representative to, of Port Prairie to um, the State Assembly hosting the Committee on Play, which is about girls' sport run by, um, at this point, the former First Lady, Mrs. Hoover. And so she has her mother on one side who's telling her, like, you can't do this, you can't wear shorts, you can't, you can't get a scratch on your nails, and meanwhile you have her friends who are like, uh, she formerly played basketball before the, uh, play takes place and she have her friends going like, oh no, you're so great at basketball, you gotta do this, and both sides, she's being tugged at both sides, and throughout the play, like basketball and everything just comes full circle with her. Very, very good, sounds interesting. Yeah, very. I'm gonna have yeah. to buy my ticket. You yeah. shall. Lucy Smith <laughs> and Cedrine Dupatan yes. are here. They're gonna come back and tell us some more of their secrets. We'll be back in just a little bit. It's Family Matters. Excellent. Once you're hit by a train, this is the size of bag that we'll use to collect what's left of you on the tracks. It was a horrible tragedy that, that could have been averted if we had just stayed off the tracks. I don't want to have to be the one that has to go tell your parents that you're dead. Make the right choice. Stay off the tracks. Family Matters, I'm Dr. Barry Hopkins, and Sandrine has just corrected me Excellent. about several things, but <laughs> one of the things she corrected me about is her name, <laughs> Sandrine. There you go. Okay. Yeah. There it is. Tell me a little bit about your background. Where are you from? I'm from uh, New York, Upper West Side of Manhattan. Yeah, well, you know, people don't mess with people from New York. Of course not. It never happened. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm actually, you know, pretty quiet and shy, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but, but they say people who grow up in New York, mm -hmm. uh, they kind of are uneasy if they ever move away. Oh, I did well. I, I moved away to Philly. I went to Temple University. I stayed in Philly for about a good 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, I've lived in Philadelphia. It's a great place, isn't it? It is. Uh -huh. it's, it's like cheesesteaks? I, I skipped over the cheesesteak. Oh. 
space. Never went into that. Ten years you skipped Ten years. Over? I didn't eat beef at the time. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not a beef eater. Are you a vegetarian now? I am not, though I dabble. <laughs> Depends on the day and how I feel. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, but I, I, I went there to um, major in magazine journalism and then joined Teach for America. And oh, for nice. the next decade or so, I was a teacher, an English teacher. The federal, federal program? Teach for America? Yeah. Okay. yeah well, the, it's not a federal program per se. It's, it's more a nonprofit, but it's a national program. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Lucy, what kind of uh, response have you gotten from your friends and neighbors and mothers and fathers and all of those kind of people <laughs> when they found out that you were going to be on the stage? Um, they were pretty excited for me. I mean, I think they were excited more the idea that it's like a professional show because I did a lot of, I did, I've done all the school musicals here and um, I think my parents were mostly excited. They so you sing? Well, <laughs> like I'm in the you women's You have choir, two singers here? Nice. How you know? You just told me. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I sing. It may not be good, but. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. Well, <laughs> uh, I understand that Columbia High School has a great musical production yeah, organization, does. and you do great, great. Uh, it's been some great experiences here. Which which, which uh, musicals were you in? I was in Legally Blonde, Cats, mm -hmm. and Ragtime last year. Nice. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Wow! You had a lot of experience. Impressive. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, but. I think my parents were excited for me to do something that wasn't school related and also I think they find it really fun to read the script around the table. Mm. Like the first night I got the script, they're like, let's just have a table read. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, do, they, do they have a theatrical uh, background? Um, I know my mom did a lot of shows when she was growing up and they both have, they work uh, behind the scenes stuff. Like my dad was, uh, like he's currently a uh, producer for a lot of like uh, small projects here. Like la a couple years ago, he did an off-Broadway show. He produced an off-Broadway show called Ray to P for Parenthood. Mm. And my mom uh, was a programmer for the Newport Film Festival, and now she's a writer. So they have a little bit of experience. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So you're growing up related to uh, the kinds of things that they find important. Yeah, I was raised on a lot of classic films, so mm -hmm. like. Mo of course, I have my giant Disney mm -hmm. repertoire, but I mm -hmm. also was raised on things like Singing in the Rain and uh, Some Like It Hot and What's Up Doc and The Godfather. So my movie background is very... <laughs> when you think about movies today, who are one or two of your favorites? And not only the, the movie, but the, the actor or actresses. Uh, one of my favorite movies... This is asking a really tough question. Um, I personally love... I still love The Godfather to this point, but I guess modern movies, I really loved um, The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch. I mm -hmm. think he's, I think he's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, another one. Uh, um, I just like said That's all right, that's all right. That's yeah. 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 That's right, you were telling me, we were talking about the Emmys just a few minutes ago. Yeah. And what's the lady's name who does the Can Get Away with Murder? What's her name? Viola Davis. Viola Davis. It's a great show, by the way. You I, should I've check it out. She's yeah, so I've seen great. Seen it? I've seen the show. It's I'm great. just missing out on her name. Yeah. Uh, but you heard a speech. I did. Yeah. Tell me how, how that hit you. Um, I thought it was an incredible moment, a historical moment, an instant uh, classic in terms of uh, something we will return to um, so I, I was inspired by it, and, and it was moving. She was saying the only thing that holds back black actresses... Opportunity. Is opportunity. Yeah. You can't win an Emmy if you're not in a production. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or no one cares or thinks mm -hmm. to write mm -hmm. you in to a story. Mm -hmm. Carrie, what's her name, Carrie Washington? Yeah. So how do you like her? I love her. She's from New York. Um, oh yeah, got yeah. that New York thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't watch her show, Scandal. Uh -huh. I, I was I a late comer. I, I can't catch up, but um, I, I love her. I've loved her work in the past. Okay, people are always comparing her show and 
how to get away, get away right. with murder. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I feel there's no comparison. You don't think so? <laughs> I think how to win again with murder is so much better. But oh, I don't watch Scandal, I agree. so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, you might get letters in. Yeah. About letters in. Sure. <laughs> but okay. I have a few friends who might argue with me. What about male actors? Male actors. Who do I like? Mm -hmm. Who do you like? Who do I like? Who do I like? The um, name again is Sandrine. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get... Criticized again, I think. Go ahead. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think an easy answer would be Denzel Washington, right? Great. Uh, great. I think he's a true great. answer too. He's a, yeah, that's uh -huh. that's exactly great. right. Um, and uh, beyond that, I think there are some newcomers that I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I I mostly appreciate the 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 live performances. Mm -hmm. Actors mm -hmm. who act on stage, okay. um, and in that case, I don't have a list okay. uh, or or catalog in my mind right now. But um, well, tell me why you don't like hip hop. I don't <laughs> like hip hop. Why would you make such a <laughs> such an accusation? I'm from New York. <laughs> I love hip hop. I grew up with hip hop. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. Yeah, you. Yeah, I might. You know. Bust a rhyme out here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh -huh. I'm kidding. No bust a rhyme. <laughs> well, hip hop has now prevailed into everything, sort of. Certainly. It's a it's a yeah. lifestyle. It's a, mm. Mm. yeah, global. Mm -hmm. Global. Yeah, it just speaks to the I think um, the quality of of just people authentically expressing their experience mm -hmm. and. And over music, the universal language, and how it can just proliferate and spread and inspire people to tell their stories to a rhythm. So, um, so you, you sound like you'll be a good agent. So oh, really can sure. Explain it Sign me up. It. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah, well, very good. Where are you going to be 10 years from now? Related. Are you asking Lucy first? Both. Both. Uh, <laughs> both. Okay. Lucy, you go first. Hopefully working. <laughs> um, I mean, I somewhere in entertainment. I love to. I love film and I love theater. And preferably, I'll be uh, in a production in front of the camera. But if not, I would. I would just love to work on a film set. I think it would be so so fun. I had a little bit experience. I went to a film uh, filmmaking camp this summer, and I did have a lot of fun there. I don't think I'll be a director, but like just being on the set, maybe like special effects or animation or um, anything like that, that would be just as great to me as okay. acting. And not being a director because you have to say, shut oh, I, up. I can't have the final down. say. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, there's too much pressure. It's like, is it good? I'll be like, ask someone else. <laughs> oh, no. No, puppy. I don't think and I should. Part of this is related <laughs> maybe to your, your college choices after yeah. you leave this senior year at Columbia High School. Mm -hmm. It seems like you're going out west. That's sort of by accident. Um, just a lot of the schools that I like to have to go out west, like I'm looking at uh, Chapman and USC for their acting programs. And Chapman had a uh, program that's like half acting, half filmmaking. So I learned everything about being on a film set while getting time uh, to getting time to work in front of the camera, mm -hmm. which I think is useful. Yeah. Hopefully yeah, I'll get well, it. I wish, I wish you well. Thanks. I hope all of that comes true. I hope so too. Ten years from now. Ten years from now. Sandrine. Hmm. Wow. We don't have enough time. <laughs> um, really. Well, let's give me five. But I'll try to okay. condense it. Okay. Um, in a hip hop way. In a, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't break dance anymore. <laughs> but um, five years ago maybe. Um, I think I, I I'd like to see myself combining my interest um, in some sort of deliverable project or program for young women or women um, that involves theater, um, some elements of uh, personal development and growth. What about these young men who are trying to be Denzel Washington? Um, maybe, <laughs> maybe them too, but I think I, 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 have, the, really I have the so women thing down. Really? Uh-huh. I might include you. Well, thank you. By 10 years but from I'd now, be, you, it, it's possible. I'd be the one token to, 
<laughs> man. Yeah, you, you can join. Man. You right. can join. Okay. You're okay. in. Well, isn't it there's a lot more women in entertainment than men? So it's hard for me to be I think I read that somewhere. I don't know. I, Someone fact check sure. this. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, I definitely think the, uh, the, the force of expression and theater in, you know, the spirit of developing oneself mm-hmm. and being creative and empowering oneself. That's the kind of work that I want to do. Uh, okay, you were telling me about you had uh, made your first entrepreneurial uh, jump into a project that dealt with working with young ladies. I did. What did you learn about them? What did you learn about you? Ah, I learned that I'm a dreamer. Mm. Yes, I, I dream big and I have high hopes for my ability to contribute to other people's lives. Uh, it was a similar program. I, it was about empowerment and sort of leadership from within. Mm-hmm. And it combines my background in journalism and service, mm-hmm. community service. And Did you get a lot of support from the mothers of those young ladies? Well, that's something I learned. It's, uh, I was going in like a dreamer with tunnel vision and didn't necessarily do the most that I could to galvanize support and sort of community involvement. So that's something that next time I'll do better Mm -hmm. uh, with. But um, yeah, I'm I'm still on the same line, dealing with social justice issues, whether by way of theater or uh, creativity, journalism Mm -hmm. or playwriting. And the teaching thing is still somewhere close by. Somewhere close by, yes. I, I'm a teacher artist. Okay. So I combine all the things that I know and talents that I have as a teacher and a performer and uh, help students express themselves and have fun and, and learn about life. Well, this has been an enlightening conversation for me. I've learned a lot. Oh, lovely. And you <laughs> have been here. so good in talking about the play that starts on October 8th. Yeah. And runs Luna, till November 1st. November 1st That's in right. West Orange, yeah. New York. 555 Valley Road. Okay. There you Thank go. you very much. <laughs> we have Lucy Schmidt and we have Sandrine. 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 I made you nervous now. Sandrine Dupaton. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Come back, okay? Thank you. Thank you. This we is will. Family Matters. I'm